Hey, it's Dave Wyman from Danny, Dave, and more. Another football 101 installment. And, you know, I was looking back at the Seahawks 21-7 victory over Minnesota on Monday night and thinking of the Rams and Kansas City Chief game. Remember, it was 54 to 51. No defense played whatsoever in that game. And everybody was speculating, is this the new NFL? Is this what it's going to look like? And no, we got a beautiful game in the Seahawks in Minnesota, my kind of game anyway, a defender. Um, six nothing with three minutes left in the fourth quarter. So very low scoring game. Seahawks just did a great job. Now defensively, there was a lot of concern coming into this game. And uh, a lot of it was because of the 400 yards that Nick Mullins, a third string quarterback for the Niners, had had the week before. And so everybody thought, well, you know, what about Shaquille Griffin? Is he playing well? Is Trey Flowers gonna, gonna hold up? And I, I thought the defensive performance that they got, and they held a good Minnesota team to under 300 yards. Anytime you can hold them to under 300 yards, and certainly seven points, you're doing a great job. But all of those guys played really well. And what the difference was, there's nothing fancy about it. It was that they executed. And in this, uh, on this play right here, there's probably the best example of execution. And what's the most basic premise in the game of football is low man wins. Get underneath pads and uh, that's how you win games. And you can drop all the fancy schemes that you want, but if you're not doing that, then you're not gonna win. And so this is a, about two minutes left in the fourth quarter here, and the Seahawks, I'm sorry, it's the third quarter, and there's a fourth and one. And right now, Minnesota's thinking, look, if we can't get a half a yard against these guys, then we'll give the ball up. And that's exactly what happened. But if you go back and watch this, first of all, the thing that they did, they had a fullback, C.J. Ham, lined up out here. He came in motion, and he was going to kick out number 51, uh, Barkevius Mingo. And the other thing that happened on that play is that when that guy went in motion, Frank kind of moved over and got his alignment just inside eye of this player right here. And this was a reported eligible tackle. And he was he came in there because just like they, you know, have George Fant uh, declare eligibility, you know, and uh, report to the, the official. This guy did the same thing. And Frank was able to beat him across his face. And the thing that he did, not only did he get lower than him, he beat him across his face and then got straight down the line. A lot of times guys will take a loop like this. You can't do that in the NFL because all of this space right here is wasted. And that's the thing about Frank. He's very stingy with space. Like he will try to get every inch that he can and fight for it. And that's what he did. He got the initial hit, the handoff comes right here from Kirk Cousins. And I think it was Latavius Murray, Dalvin Cook, whoever right here. And he was able to get the hit and slow him down. The other thing that happened, a great example of a guy who has not played linebacker. It's been night and day for Barkevius Mingo from what he's done in the league so far. He's been in a three-point stance his whole football life. And now he's like a, a linebacker. He's up in a two-point stance and he comes and he tips all the way down to probably about that low and gets underneath him and blows that block up and then Bobby comes and just finishes the whole thing off with a, another great hit. And again, his pad level lower than the running back. So, you know, if you want to, what was the big mystery? How did they, you know, how did they win this game? It was a lot of that. And I thought the defense really won this game for him, holding them to, to seven points. Let's talk about Bobby Wagner really quick. Amazing stats last week. He blocks a field goal this week. As a matter of fact, last week against, or two weeks ago against San Francisco, I thought, well, if he would have blocked a punt or a field goal, that would have been, you know, maybe the only thing left for him to do after having a forced fumble, fumble recovery, interception for a touchdown, and, uh, and then he goes and blocks a field goal in the next, name, next game. But remember, Bobby missed the Chicago game, but I went through and looked at his snaps in all of the other 12 games. He's been involved in 100% of the snaps, including the play after he ran 98 yards. Because remember, after you score on defense, you got to go right back on defense. And Bobby was, uh, was out on the field for that play. So just a huge part of what they're doing. And Bobby's sort of the connection, the last connection, I, I think they said on Monday Night Football, between the Legion of Boom and this defense. And he loves these kids. And, uh, you know, he's a great leader out there, one of the older guys out there. But you got a bunch of young guys doing really good 
good things. And I think that's one of the reasons why they've struggled giving up yardage is just because they're young and they haven't played together that much. But I'll tell you what, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw them go down and entirely limit San Francisco offensively just because, and they did points wise, 16 points when they played San Francisco last time. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see that yardage go under 300 yards just because all of these guys are playing really well and playing together, but mostly, like in this play, it's all about execution.